Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to try and unravel a mystery. I'm going to talk about Jean-Claude Van Damme's passion project that's been 10 years and it's not even released. So the film has gone through several different titles, at one point being called Full Love, The Eagle Path, Soldiers, and even Frenchie. For the remainder of the video, I'm just going to refer to it as The Eagle Path since that's my favorite title of the bunch. Let me know in the comments section, by the way, what your favorite is. So I'm going to break down the timeline of events, tell you why it's never seen release, and give you my own thoughts on what I think about this unique project, so stay tuned. Oh, by the way, if you're new to the channel and you like Jean-Claude Van Damme and Sylvester Stallone and those guys and martial arts and action movies, uh, primarily of the 80s and 90s, but those movies in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up to help support the channel. So the Eagle Path is like the elusive Bigfoot. There have been sightings, there's even photographic and video evidence, but no real tangible proof of its existence. I've been searching for a copy of it for years, only to be teased by IMDB and Amazon about its release date. It would really be intriguing to see this movie released as a quote new Van Damme film in 2020 or 2021 or even 2022 because it would be like digging up a time capsule. The film was initially shot in 2008 in Thailand with additional footage shot four years later in 2012 in Bulgaria. So Van Damme would definitely look younger. It'd be like a hidden treasure for us fans to finally see its release. As far as the title goes, the original script and production title was Full Love, but the project has been referred to as the Eagle Path during its first screening on May 13th at the 2010 Cannes Film Festival. Here's some footage of Van Damme speaking prior to the screening. I'll come to your best TV show. I will do a different talk, of course, no commercial. <laughs> and I will help you try to put back with you that line here. All of you have a chain of theater. I'll get a studio. I would like to use a mini studio, which is a big studio in all country, and be part of you, but on a faithful way. Now the interesting thing we have to keep in mind and something that distributors would have been turned off by with the film JCVD is that Jean-Claude Van Damme reportedly withdrew from publicity duties for that movie in 2008 to tend to his sick dog. So at the 2010 Cannes Film Festival, he's essentially telling promoters he will not withdraw promoting this film if they pick it up and distribute it in their country. Now about the dog named Scarface, Van Damme said, He had a stroke. I talked to him in his ear and I prayed because I believe in forces. Now he's doing fine. Van Damme explained it, he believes speaking to his unconscious pet helped revive him. Now Van Damme's long been a vocal animal rights activist and an overall animal lover and that's one thing among many others that I really like and respect about him. So from a human perspective and of course Van Damme's perspective, he certainly made the right choice to be with his dog in his time of need. It may have even been the last chance he'd get to spend with his canine companion. Now everyone with a pet would understand, their family, it's such a strong bond and it's important. Now from a distributor point of view, they're not going to care about someone else's dog because it's not personal for them. There's an article from The Wrap that I'll link in the description below and it sheds some light on how things look from their perspective. One of the distributors said, Van Damme was bad and he did not do these things to support the critically acclaimed JCVD distributed in the US. He hurt himself, another programmer said. This was his chance for a comeback and he blew it. You blew it, boy! You really blew it! Van Damme bungled a golden opportunity to be taken seriously by not coming to the US to support the opening of JCVD as he had promised. Canceling about 72 hours before he was supposed to fly to New York from Asia, Van Damme gave the excuse that one of his seven dogs was ill. Exhibitors had sold tickets to the opening weekend predicated on an in-person appearance by the Muscles from Brussels and had to refund a fair number of admissions. Everyone looked bad, a distribution consultant friend said. We had promised Van Damme to the theater owners and now their patrons felt like they had purchased tickets under false pretenses. By not coming to the US, Van Damme missed valuable press opportunities as well as obligations on the DVD version, an incident that is widely believed to have affected a decent gross that could have been higher. Overall, you just gotta chalk it up to really bad timing with uh, his dog Scarface. Now during the screening in 2010, The Eagle Path received overall poor reviews and little response from distributors to pick up the picture, and so it sat on the shelf while Van Damme returned to the editing room. Here's an interesting side note by the way. So around this time in 2009, Sylvester Stallone contacted Van Damme because he wanted him to be part of the first Expendables movie. However, Van Damme was editing The Eagle Path, so he told Stallone he couldn't do it, which surprised Stallone. But Van Damme said, I had that fever. If the King of Thailand is calling me, no, I stay in my room. Cutting, cutting, cutting. Van Damme would of course years later appear as the main villain in The Expendables 2 in 2012. The Eagle Path was a very personal project for Van Damme. He described the film as being based on a story based in another reality. Which is an interesting statement. 
But I'm sure there are multiple realities running next to each other. For example, imagine a life-defining decision you made that just took your life in a completely different direction. And imagine your life where it would be now if 5 or 10 years ago you made the other choice. There's probably another version of yourself in that different reality, but let's not get too far off track like this film's release date. If you guys really want to explore that topic further, just check out the Jet Li movie called The One from 2001. Van Damme would not only star in The Eagle Path, but he would also direct, produce, write, and edit the film. He really took full creative control, much like Sylvester Sloan in several of his iconic films. Not only that, but his children would also play parts in the film. This may not seem like such a big deal now, as both Christopher and Bianca Van Varenberg have appeared in several other Van Damme films, but the still unreleased The Eagle Path was one of their first films he would appear in. In a 2011 interview, here's what Van Damme had to say. I put my own money into the Eagle Path. It's a very personal project for a number of reasons. Not just because of that or because my son Christopher and my daughter Bianca are in the movie. It's a story I wanted to tell for a long time. When I talked about making the film before, people told me they liked the idea but then suggested changing so many elements that it would no longer have been the movie I wanted to make. After JCVD, I knew I wanted to do something that was a little different and I thought it was time to do this project. So I decided to put up the money myself and shoot the movie I wanted to make. I used a lot of new actors and gave them the chance to improvise, to breathe life into the characters. We had a cast that was all working together for the same goal. It's a hard film to talk about without giving too much away, and I am interested to see how people respond to the project and the performances. As far as the cast goes, here's some interesting trivia. Forrest Whitaker and Nick Nolte are both good friends of Van Damme and were considered for roles in this film. Of course, Forrest Whitaker starred alongside Van Damme in Bloodsport. David Winters was supposed to co-produce the movie and play a role but turned down the project because of creative differences. And Dimitra Giova, who was already cast to play the character Sophia, but due to unknown reasons was replaced by Claudia Basals. Around 2012, Van Damme stated that the film was going to be retitled as Soldiers. This was after additional footage was shot for the film in Bulgaria, with the help of Van Damme's old buddy, producer Mashi Diamant, who worked with Van Damme on the classics Time Cop and Hard Target. The reshoots were done to help clarify the story and beef up the action sequences, which were inspired by the Gareth Evans' film, The Raid. In 2014, the new cut of the film, which reverted back to its original title, Full Love, appeared at the Shanghai International Film Festival. No formal reviews were released, but there was footage of Van Damme speaking about the film, he stated that it's divided into three basic sections, in Louisiana, the war, and the heat of Malaysia. Going by the trailer footage that was released, it looks like the section that deals with Louisiana would be the flashback sequences when his character Frenchie was a child. So the synopsis of the film says, a military veteran and former mercenary named Frenchie is haunted by his childhood, as well as his past in the military. Something traumatic would have had to have happened in his past. Just going strictly by the trailer footage, I think he killed his abusive father. As far as the war section goes, that should be self-explanatory. And what I like about that is that it looks like he'll be reteaming up with his old war buddies for his missions. What do you need? Weapons. So you going to war over a uh, lady? Who's going to help you besides me? Luther, Vinny. Takes us to section 3, the heat in Malaysia. So here the plot would see Frenchie, Van Damme's character, working as a taxi driver hiding somewhere in East Asia, haunted by his past. After his driving shifts, he often frequents the Eagle's Nest, a seedy bar that houses a caged eagle. In the midst of the chaotic Asian traffic, Frenchie picks up a beautiful female passenger who will change him forever. Driven by dark memories of his childhood, he becomes determined to improve her life and without her approval. I just want to protect you. What game are you playing with me? He embarks on a journey which proves to be more dangerous and complicated than he expected. After encountering a series of harrowing obstacles, he calls in favors from his special ops friends who immediately join him. His military team engages in the biggest fight of their lives. Now each of these three sections, by the way, employs a different color palette. For example, the war section is in black and white. So going back to the original cut in 2010, the film has been described as part action, which is a typical Van Damme we come to expect, and part art house, which is not something you typically or ever see in an action film. In fact, there were even some critics who compared the film's more out there sequences to 2001 A Space Odyssey or Terrence Malick's Tree of Life. Fans had to wonder, had Van Damme gone art house? Another reviewer said that Jean-Claude Van Damme made a movie that is very different to what you might expect from him. The action isn't the focus, the drama and the characters are. And the version streamed at cons was very heavy with the ecological message at the end. Now it kind of reminds me of that what Steven Seagal tried to do at the end of On Deadly Ground. How many of you out there have heard of alternative engines? 
Engines that can run on anything from alcohol to garbage or water. Or carburetors that can get hundreds of miles to the gallon. Or electric or magnetic engines. You don't know about them because if they were to come into use, they put the oil companies out of business. I definitely give both men credit for trying to put a message out there that may influence someone's mind in some way to try to do their part in trying to preserve our planet. But it's certainly an odd choice to tag on the end of what someone is going into expecting as an action film. Mike Leader from Black Belt Magazine claimed that the film is a quote, dark journey that at times seems reminiscent of the work of Johnny Toe or Pierre Melville in terms of character development and the way things play out. There's actually an official review of the 2010 cut of the film from Variety, which I'll link in the description below, but a quick summarization, it states, There's something earnestly off the wall in this first directorial effort from the 49-year-old Belgian. Both a throwaway revenge pick and a Nazi unveiling of inner traumas, the Eagle Path feels as if Van Damme can shake his roots in B-grade combat films and is doing his ultimate fighting best to remake them as European auteur. Where results is borderline unwatchable, even if the star puts his all into the role of Frenchie, a Vietnam vet overcome by memories of an abusive father. Now, of course, that variety of review was incorrect in stating that the Eagle Path is Van Damme's first directorial effort. That actually happened in 1996 with The Quest. There's another review from Blueprint Review on that 2010 cut as well that I'll link in the description below. It states, there were a large number of people who walked out of this film, including a couple of previously excited French teenagers who had sat next to us for the screening. One of them muttered, This is crap to me, as they got up from their seats before heading to a hasty retreat to the exit. And I'm afraid to say that's pretty much all you really need to know about the Eagle Path. Boy, it really sounds like they're talking about the Railed. I really hope when it comes out we don't finally see it and say, It's so bad it's the Railed. I coined that phrase in a previous video, by the way, the Fighters of Lionheart. Make sure to check that out if you haven't yet, linked in the description below. But going back to that review, it does at least say, on a more positive note, this film isn't a complete disaster. It's actually shot pretty well for the most part, and a few of the earlier fight scenes are quite good. But then it states, of particular horror for me was the editing, which is shockingly bad at times and doesn't do the somewhat confused story any favors whatsoever. Well that's interesting because Van Damme did such a great job editing some other films like Cyborg and Bloodsport for example, and also had a big influence on how the theatrical cut of Hard Target came out. All solid Van Damme movies. Now bear in mind, the cut those reviews were based on is likely something we'll never see. As mentioned before, additional footage was shot in 2012 and the film was recut and shown at the Shanghai Film Festival in 2014. But then the film went AWOL again until 2018 when Van Damme promoted a theatrical version at Cannes and stated a 2019 release for the film, which of course never happened. But as far as 2019 goes, here's something funny that was posted on April 1st, yes April Fool's Day on the City on Fire website in 2019, which I'll link in the description below. It references a 3 disc Blu-ray edition of the film uh, with full specs listed. For example, Full Love 4K remastered version of the never before released final cut representing Van Damme's true vision for his epic tale. And then The Eagle Path, a 2K remastered version of Van Damme's original cut screened at the 2010 Cannes Film Festival. And then Soldiers, the rare work print of the 2012 Redux version which contained newly shot scenes inspired by the at the time recent release of The Raid. And then all kinds of other bonus features as well including a one hour making of documentary, audio commentaries on all three versions of the film from Jean-Claude Van Damme and principal cast members. Oh and then my favorite, an exclusive slipcover for the first 500 pressings featuring newly commissioned artwork created by Van Damme himself, available exclusively at Walmart. Look at the picture, uh, the artwork by the way, it, that Van Damme supposedly would have done by himself. It reminds me of the picture his niece uh, gave him in Lionheart. That artistic gene must run in the family. But overall I found that article amusing because when I was doing research for this video, these are legitimately some of the things I was hoping on for a real release. I mean not so much the artwork for example, but the, definitely the audio commentaries. Because I believe the Eagle Path was just too ambitious a project with several elements that just didn't translate well in the film, which is why an audio commentary with the release would provide us, the audience, some insight into what exactly Van Damme was hoping to achieve with the movie. It may make sense to him, the artist, but not necessarily to us, the audience. It's complex. I have a complex mind. 
Overall, film is a language unto itself, a language most people can easily read, but when you get into these artsy films, it doesn't translate so well. A big part of it's because all the films we have seen and experienced, we assume a certain narrative structure, beginning, middle, and end, and visually something we can recognize and wouldn't be confused with seeing in the real world. In other words, a verisimilitude. There's a reason why when they adapt books into films, oftentimes the audience and fans of those books are disappointed. It's a completely different medium though. In fact, the goal that a screenwriter has when adapting a book into a screenplay is to just make the best possible screenplay that would translate well into the film based on the source material. The goal is not to try and be verbatim about putting page in the film, which in itself is an insurmountable task. Film is not an interior medium, whereas in written literature, the characters are defined by what they feel as well as what they do. So maybe in some ways, the complex, traumatized character of Frenchie and the Eagle Path would work better as a novel. And speaking of Frenchie, it looks like that's the current title being used, at least that's how it currently is promoted on the Rodent Entertainment website, which I'm pretty sure is Van Damme's own production company. Anyway, let me know what your guys' thoughts are about this yet-to-be-released film in the comments below. For example, are you more or less excited to see it now since it's been so long?